Welcome back to page 121. Today we're going to take a look at not referee briefing number three, although I have looked at this in the past. We're going to take a look at meeting in a bar. Oh gosh, that used to be such a trope in role-playing games. D&D started it. Traveler had it a lot. Your characters would just meet in a bar and then you would go off. It, it's now considered the, it was a dark and stormy night equivalent of starting a game. If, if anybody who may not know, it, it a Dark and Stormy Night is considered the worst way to start a novel uh, of any sentence you can use. It's just considered to be completely trite and hack and things like that. And that same thing became true of role-playing games. By the mid-80s, TSR, allegedly, would not even look at any adventure that was submitted by anybody if it started in a bar. Because it had become such a cliche for them, they wanted to get away from that. Well, there's a reason why you start in a bar. It's a common meeting area for people. And I've done many, many business meetings in bars or restaurants. They, that's what you do. But in any case, I'm arguing for starting it, you meet in a Starport bar. So for that, I'm going to go to the Going Port side. And this is a really good uh, one of these little uh, referee helpers, referee briefings. I think it's the best of the, the six that they did. I recommend all six. I've looked at all six. But you get a nice look at hotels, bars, and restaurants, complete with advertising, which I love. You can really breathe life into your game, especially in the early going, with some advertising and other things that will make the players feel more immersed in their game. So we're going to start off, and we're going to go to, uh, let's see, Planetfall. Planetfall Bar and Grill. It's just a chain of bars and grills. Why would I start there? Well, for one thing, it's a familiar setting for your players especially for people who've never played the game before, it can be something kind of comfortable to break them into the game. The other advantage is you can start out with some action. I, personally, as my players will tell you, love starting a game, especially a new campaign, with a good bar fight. And sometimes just as a little interlude, uh, if the players have been kind of getting worked over a little bit by the dice or just not, uh, the game's just not really going where I, I want it to go as they go to town, I'll go ahead and I'll have them get into a bar fight. And the same is true with Traveler. Nice thing about a bar fight in Traveler is it's not lethal. Of course, people can get killed in bar fights and do, but in Traveler you won't because in Traveler it's just fists and you're going to take the damage and be better and everybody's going to have fun playing it. So it's a great way to open the game up and to introduce people to combat. It's just a good old-fashioned bar fight. So that's why I'm an advocate of meeting in a bar. The other thing is you meet many contacts while you're in the bar. Maybe it's part of the set thing. You're there to meet the person in the star bar. Or maybe it's somebody that you happen across who's drowning his sorrows a little bit. And you get to know that, hey, he's got this cargo. He can't move because the ship's jump drive is down. It's going to be six weeks and he's going to be late. Maybe you get an opportunity to pick up that cargo for a percentage. You would not have had that opportunity had you not met him in the star bar. So that's why I advocate for this. Now. I don't start every game in a bar. I don't start many games in a bar, but I will start some in a bar, whether it's an ongoing established campaign or a brand new one. The other advantage, as I've said, is if you have brand new people at the table and you want to start in a bar, a good place to introduce them to combat. You have a little bar fight breakout. Everybody loves that in Trouble with Tribbles when the Klingons and the crew of the Enterprise mix it up. It's a great uh, moment. There are many, many bar fights that have happened throughout cinema history. But that's a good way to kind of get the players used to meeting, being with each other, working as a team, and if they haven't met yet, meeting. So that can also be a good way to role play the uh, encounter connection, the connections rule for Traveler uh, in Mongoose Second, where you have skills together. Well, maybe you could actually role play those skills together. Maybe you get Brawling One because you met this guy and you jumped in to help him out in a fight. So you go ahead and you, that's your connection with that character and you choose Brawling 1 as your, uh, your skill out of it. It's just an interesting way for the connections rule to be played also and can be a more active way for your characters to kind of dynamically achieve the connections. And maybe while the, the connection meeting in the bar is going on, maybe you decide that uh, instead of taking Brawling 1, you're going to take Carouse 1 or you're going to take Deception 1 because you were able to you know, hold out a weapon or something and, and or just get away from being picked up with the rest of the group or the other side. Uh, you slipped out the back, so you get deception, 
Streetwise, something like that. Any kind of connection, but it's a way to dynamically role play it instead of just statically saying, oh, we met at school. Nothing wrong with saying, oh, we met at school. But if you want to introduce your characters a little more lively, in a little more lively manner, that this would be a, a way I'd recommend it. I also like the idea of meeting in a star bar because you have the opportunity to be in the melee without fatal consequences generally. Well, I've already said that. Uh, you also have an opportunity to introduce the uh, player characters to the local jail. They do get arrested because of the consequence of the star bar. They get a two-day sit in the jail and a 50-credit fine, and then they're able to go back and, and continue their lives. It can be a nice little sidetrack for you, be a little something for your characters to write on their sheet. I know there are a lot of other ways you can achieve this, but it still is, in my mind, a solid way to, to start out a game. So meeting in a star bar, to me, is not hack or trite or cliche. It's just another toolkit, tool in the kit, tool in the toolbox for the game master to pull out and say, okay, we're going to do this today. Meeting in a star bar can also be mid-game. Maybe you have an appointment with somebody you're going to meet, and maybe they decide to meet in the star bar. The old Babylon 5 series, they all met in the Zocalo, the marketplace area, and they would sit there and they would have their meetings right there in public. It's a safe way to have a meeting. There's plenty of witnesses around. Nobody's going to try any shenanigans. But you can still get your productive work done without people really noticing what you're doing for the most part. A lot of advantages to it. Uh, I do recommend it. I, I do use it, whether I start a game or in midpoint of a game. It can add to a lot of interesting interplay between your characters and their choices as uh, role players, what they want to do, how they want to deal with the fact that they've just been arrested. Maybe it's something that your character with the Sterling naval career He's just freshly out of the Navy, and he's just getting his feet under him in his civilian life, and he ends up getting arrested. Maybe it's a, a blight on his personal record. Maybe he just doesn't like that it happened. Uh, maybe it's something that he's proud of. He's, had, you know, he's a former naval guy, and he's been arrested many times for fighting in a bar. Who knows? It all depends on how you want to develop the character and the character interaction. So, yes, I am going with the trope. I am meeting in a star bar, and I'm advocating it. I think it has a place in Traveler, and I think it can be a great role-playing opportunity. So please leave any comments below if you think I'm, I'm just all the way wrong and you should never, ever include that in a game, or it should only be a minor part of a game. Whatever you decide, uh, let me know, please, in the comments below. Also, please like and subscribe if you uh, enjoyed the video, if, if you haven't subscribed to the channel. Also, please take a look at the Patreon. Help me out there if you can. And that's really all I've got to say today. I want to thank you for your time. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time on page 121.